Hi, and welcome to Professor Pincushion. I'm Tova, and today I'm going to show you how to make a neoprene tablet sleeve. Want to protect your small electronics like a tablet or cell phone? You can use neoprene to make a simple protective sleeve. I'll show you how to measure your electronics for this project and then how to sew it all together. Not only is this a fun project to do, but it's also a great gift for friends and family. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are some of the supplies I'm going to be using for this project. You're going to need your tablet or phone for us to measure in order to create our sleeve. And then you need to have your fabric. Now the main part is going to be neoprene. So this neoprene is 2.5 millimeters in thickness. The amount depends on how big your tablet or phone is. For a tablet that I'm doing, I need about a quarter of a yard, but you may need more or less than that. It's going to be the same thing for my contrasting fabric. Now this is a stretch neoprene print, but if you can't find something like this, you can also use a scuba knit or a ponte knit. I have my hand sewing needle, some cording here for the tie for my one inch button, fabric marker, sewing gauge. I have some binder clips just to hold things together since I'm not gonna be using straight pins. Flexible tape measure, all purpose thread, scissors, and a rotary cutter. If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can also just use scissors if you want. I just find it easier for cutting these fabrics out. And if you're using a rotary cutter, don't forget to use your rotary cutting mat. Not shown here that I'm also going to be using is going to be my sewing machine with a walking foot. Use your flexible tape measure to get three different measurements from your tablet. I'm going to measure the width, the length, and then the thickness or the depth, so the side here. For my sleeve, I need to cut out two pieces out of my neoprene, the front and the back, and I'm going to use these measurements in order to figure out what size I want to cut them out. So we're gonna start doing a little bit of math here. First, I'm gonna just start with the width. So I'm just using my width and length as an example. So mine is four and five eighths inches. To this measurement, I'm going to add whatever my depth is. So we're going to add a half inch to that. And then I'm going to add seam allowance. So everybody can just go ahead and add a half inch. That's gonna give us a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. Plus to this, I'm going to add a little bit of ease. I am going to add 3 eighths of an inch, but you can make this as much of it as a half inch if you want. All right, so then I'm going to add all this together. You may need to use your calculator for this. And for me, it's easy enough. It comes out to a nice round number of six inches. So that's gonna be one side of my rectangle that I'm cutting out. Now I'm gonna do the length. So again, I'm gonna use my example. It's seven and a half inches to start with. I'm gonna go ahead and add the depth, which is a half inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another quarter inch of seam allowance. And now instead of a half inch, I'm only doing a quarter inch because you only have seam allowance on the bottom of the sleeve and not on the top because obviously we have an opening. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of length to the top so that I'm gonna add another half inch. So then that's gonna get me eight and three quarters inches. So that means I'm cutting two neoprene rectangles and it's going to be, in my example, six inches by eight and three quarters. Now I'm also going to cut out from my contrasting fabric, which is my pug fabric. Now this is going to be a little bit smaller than the neoprene pieces. So we're gonna make it nice and easy. So I have my front and then I have my back. The front is gonna be a little bit smaller because we have the notch cut out with a button, so it doesn't need to be quite as big. So we'll do that first. So I'm doing cut two out of my contrasting fabric, but I'm gonna separate this into the front piece. I'm gonna make it one inch smaller than my width of my neoprene. So this is gonna be five inches. And then I'm gonna take an inch and three quarters off of whatever this length is. So we'll just make it a nice even, for me, seven inches. So for my pug fabric, I'm cutting a piece 
that's five inches by seven inches. The back, I'm just gonna go ahead, keep it easy again, one inch less than this, five inches, and then I'm just gonna make it slightly less than that. So I'm just gonna go ahead, take off three quarters of an inch and make this eight inches. So just to reiterate, going off my measurements, I have two pieces of neoprene that I cut out. That's six by eight and three quarters. This one is one of the prints or my contrasting. This is the front, it's five by seven, and this one's slightly bigger at five by eight. Now I cut all my pieces out using my rotary cutter, which makes it a lot easier since we are just doing something simple like rectangles here. Take one of your neoprene rectangles and we're gonna say this is going to be the back of our project. Now for neoprene, there's usually no wrong side or right side, you can just pick one. So I'm gonna say this yellow side is going to be my right side. I'm going to measure along the top. So this is my six inches up here and then eight and three quarters is going down this length here. So on my top of my sleeve, I'm gonna measure down the center. So for me, that's three inches and go down half an inch and make a mark. I'm then going to cut out my cording. This is five inches in length. I'm gonna bring the ends together and I'm going to match up the ends with this point here like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead at my sewing machine and stitch across these ends just to hold it into place for now. When sewing this project, I'm using a walking foot and then I'm using a heavy duty needle. In my case, I'm using a denim needle. It makes it a little bit easier to get through the neoprene. So I'm just gonna do a few tacking stitches to hit my button loop into place there. And the seam allowance doesn't really matter. I'm doing it about a half inch in from the raw edge here. And I'm just doing just a few stitches it's a little bit longer than the regular straight stitch, so I'm doing a three on my machine. This is still right side up. I'm gonna grab my contrasting pug fabric here. It's also right side up. And I'm going to center it on my neoprene. From this edge, it's about a quarter of an inch. So there is a bigger gap down here at the bottom than at the top. That's because we're gonna end up having a seam allowance down here. And it should be a half inch from both sides here in. Now, since I'm not gonna go ahead and use pins to hold it into place, because I don't wanna cause any unnecessary holes in my neoprene, I'm just gonna use my binding clips here just to hold things into place so then I can stitch it in my machine. I'm gonna switch my stitch to a zigzag stitch. And my stitch length you see is a two for a normal stitch length, but I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to about a three just to make my zigzag stitch a little bit bigger. I also recommend experimenting with sewing some neoprene in your sewing machine before you stitch anything else, just so you can correct any thread tension if you need to. For my machine, in order to get a better looking stitch, I need to increase my thread tension to an eight. I'm sewing my zigzag stitch around the full perimeter of my contrasting fabric, which in this case is my pug fabric. So I'm using this edge as my guideline and the zigzag stitch is gonna go right along this edge and not extend into my yellow neoprene fabric. And that's going to attach my contrasting fabric to the neoprene. Next, I'm gonna grab my other neoprene piece. So this is going to be the front of our sleeve. And it doesn't matter for this part if you're looking at the right side or wrong side. We're gonna cut out the notch at the top. So I'm looking at one of the short ends. So this is the six inch and then the eight and three quarters goes this way. I'm gonna cut out a little pattern for myself so I can get a notch that looks as nice as possible. It's basically just a half circle. This is two inches and then I have one inch going in the center and then I just connect it into a smooth curve. And again, it doesn't matter if you do this on the right side or the wrong side. I'm just going to center it best I can. So if you need to measure three inches over, at least for me, then I'm gonna do that, put a mark and then put the center in that. Then use my fabric marker to draw a line on this outside curve of my pattern. And then I can go ahead, remove my pattern and cut along that line to get the notch. Once your notch is cut out, you can go ahead and grab your other contrasting piece. So this is the smaller one and you're going to center it just like we did with the back. Once you have it in place, you can go ahead and clip it, or if it still kind of shifts on you, even with a walking foot, use some basting spray on the wrong side of this before you lay it on top, and that should help. 
then just like we did with the back, you're going to do your zigzag stitch right around that edge perimeter. Next, we're going to mark the placement of our button. So I'm going to measure the center. So for me, I'm going over three inches and then from the edge of the cutout, I'm measuring down about five eighths of an inch and then making a mark. If you're using a flat button for your button, it's pretty easy, you just sew through the holes. But if you're doing a shank button like I am, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm using a different button and fabric than in my project, just as a little bit easier for you to see everything. I'm also using contrasting thread on my needle, but you definitely wanna use a matching one. So it's pretty standard to start off with. You're just bringing up from the wrong side, I have a knot at the end of my thread on one side of my shank. And then I'm going to go through the hole of the shank, pull this all the way through, and then I'm going to go down directly on the other side of the shank. You don't want to get too close, but you want to make sure that when you pull your thread all the way through, that it's nice and tight. So there we have one stitch. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this, I would say about five or six more times. After you go through it a few times, it's gonna look something like this on each side of the shank. And my thread is now on the right side. So just to finish up, on each side, I'm just gonna show you how to do this on one side, but you're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. I'm gonna bring my needle and I'm gonna go behind my threads. You don't have to go through all of them, but you do wanna go through most of them. So you can see how that's going through there. I'm gonna pull this through. I'm gonna do it again. So you're basically just wrapping your thread around all these strands to kind of bring them together. And then my last one, what I'm gonna do is you'll see it start to form a loop and I'm gonna go right through that loop and that's gonna tie a knot. And then I can go ahead, put my needle through the hole and do the same exact thing on the other side of the shank. Take your back and front, you're gonna place them together wrong side to wrong side. So I'm gonna flip this over, put this on top, match up your edges, and then use your quilt clips to kind of clip the edges to hold it all together. And you're gonna do your quarter inch seam allowance around the sides and in the bottom. So you're not gonna do anything on the top because of course we wanna leave this open so you're able to slip your tablet inside. When doing your quarter inch seam, don't forget to do some back stitching, of course, at the beginning and end. And I made my stitch length a little bit longer. So instead of a two, I did a three or a 3.5. You just wanna do it a little bit longer when sewing with neoprene. This is the straight stitch that I just did at the quarter inch seam allowance. So now the fun part, we get to test it with our tablet and make sure that it fits and button this up. So this is the front where you can see the notch and you can see when it's pushed in all the way, I have a little bit of extra wiggle room here on the end, but because there is a notch, it does make it easy to grab it and pull out. Let's go ahead, take a look at the back. So this is how you make a cute customized sleeve for your tablet or phone. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.